To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, each according to his own ability. I'm John Von Traeger. I've been a resident of the Western New York area for all of my life and also have the joy and pleasure of being in business and having reached the height of success. But also, I have been at the bottom at various different times. You do not have to stay at the bottom. You can have faith in yourself and faith in God and you can reach that mountaintop experience again. This video is to tell you a story of a young man named John John. At age three, his parents were told to put him in an institution as it was hopeless. You see, his behavior and self-abuse were so violent that nothing they did helped him. His now deceased father said no, and so the climb of that unbelievable mountain began. This is the story of John John's comeback to life from the threat of institution to a young, loving, active, productive young man. This is a story of the possibility of others like him labeled disabled to realize their hidden talents. I encourage you to open up your heart to the story and see a miracle. He uh, began to deteriorate behaviorally and the speech that he had, um, he certainly was conversing and had reached all his developmental milestones but lost all of that and became withdrawn and um, didn't want anybody to really come near him. From that time on, from the time he was just about two until almost four, um, John John deteriorated to the point where um, we didn't even know the child anymore. Things I remember about babysitting with um, John was uh, Oh, I remember the one time when uh, he shut the bedroom door and pushed the dresser up against the door, and, uh, and then he climbed out the bedroom window and went running. Oh, he used to bang his head constantly on the walls, on the bed, on the floor. He'd sit on the floor and bang his head or go in the closet and bang his head. And by the time he was almost four, um, we had a child that was very much locked up inside of himself and a child that we didn't know. We went to, from doctor to doctor to doctor and from professional to professional to find out what the problem was. When um, the violence, his violence became so strong and it began to turn on his younger sibling, Bill, and as well as everybody in the household, and we literally feared for the safety of everybody. They ultimately said that if um, they, would, they would take him and put him in a, an intensive behavioral unit um, in a local area, in the local area. But in order for them to do that, we had to give him up. That if, um, if we loved him, we would give him up. Through a series of events, God divinely intervened and the comeback began. I recollect uh, John as being a student who really wanted and sought out interaction with the high school students who were in, in the special ed population. But he really didn't know how to go about that. He didn't know how to initiate interaction. And as a result, he um, made people nervous. He would stare at people, or he would say things to them which were inappropriate. We, we started a vocational training activity here where we refinished furniture. And John was one of the first students to be involved in that. And. Uh, it was evident from day one that John had a, a, an interest in that. He had an aptitude for this. And we were amazed at how long John would stay on task in that kind of activity. Uh, it was very different than any uh, on task behavior we had seen previous to that. My dad often spoke of a threefold dream that he had uh, for services for families that have individuals with disabilities. First, he wanted to have an organization that would provide support and advocacy and fellowship for the families as a family unit. This has been accomplished with great success with Agape Parents Fellowship. 
The second phase would be a vocational skills program, which would be, give us an opportunity to, to maximize the individual's talents. Finally, we would like to have a respite facility for both the individual with disabilities and their caregivers. Thus, the second phase of John Fish's vision, the vocational skills program, is born. The Carpenter's Hand is located on 33 beautifully wooded acres in Springville, New York. The property accommodates a 1,500 square foot ranch home, pond, and numerous hiking trails packed with wildlife and defined by a 150 foot gorge. Also located here is a small 600 square foot workshop where the program has been tested. The existing shop, however, can only accommodate up to three people. Since Carpenter's Hand would like to bring 12 individuals, construction has recently begun on our new facility called the John E. Fish Talent Enrichment Center. We've talked about the, uh, the concept of the Talent Enrichment Center. And what does that really mean? It means that um, an individual like John John will be given the opportunity to develop their skills to the fullest of their capability and also their desire. Um, John started off with a hand sander and now he uses mechanical sanders. Um, John has the opportunity of making hope chests, making Frank Wright plaques, um, also baby cradles that he gives at baby dedications at churches. John or those six men or women will be given the opportunity to develop their skills to the point that they could make a grandfather clock or they could make uh, a very nicely woven Mennonite style quilt. Once fully operational, Carpenter's Hand will begin to construct retreat cottages for the parents of the challenged, plus those under acute stress. All this is being done with the BOCES II Ormsby Center Vocational Trade Division supplying labor while gaining actual site experience. A wonderful opportunity is developed through this collaborative effort. The concept has been tested in John John and on a limited basis with Mike Rogan and Bill Brackett. I'm delighted at the privilege of saying something with regard to Carpenter's Hand and its ministry. One of the reasons I'm so excited about it is that there are 53 million Americans with disabilities. That's approximately 20% of our population. And for a long time, people like that were discarded, locked away, and their potential was never unlocked. Industry and the government are together doing this. What's happening at Carpenter's Hand uh, at first hand glance of it to me is something exciting. The possibilities are endless. And I look forward to seeing many, many young men and young women coming through this program and being successful. I am pleased to be a supporter of the goals of Carpenter's Hand. It has been a pure delight to purchase the first grandfather clock produced at Carpenter's Hand and displayed in my showroom. I know it helped develop a sense of pride in John John. It's exciting to know that a young man with autism discovered his talents and ability and produced his heirloom. Won't you join me with your support in Carpenter's Hand and its vision? It's always interesting to see the change in a person. And I've seen a tremendous change, for instance, in John John. I remember before Carpenter's Hand, every time you talked to John John, he talked about how much he missed his daddy. I know he still misses him today. But now he has a different focus on life. He's focusing outward on who he's going to be and what he's going to do. He was very proud of his accomplishments. He was very, uh, there was a difference in his self-esteem. And um, that is a tremendous change in John. It's just a wonderful, wonderful change in him. Carpenter's hand has made a difference in his life. Will you join me in helping to support Carpenter's hand that these young people may realize their potential and develop their talents.